We've got a couple of questions we want to ask you before we get started. A couple of questions we want to ask you to fix your eyes to the screen to hear what the Lord has to say to us uh, in terms of this quiz, this quiz, this quiz. We're going to be ready we get to heaven and having quizzes in heaven. We're going to be ready. All this is preparation. Just in case we get to heaven, they're doing something that we ain't see in the, they ain't talk about in the Bible, but we already practiced for it. Jesus' body was placed in a tomb that belonged to this person. Simon Peter, Joseph of Arimathea, Nicodemus, Saul of Tarsus. Who was it? Nicodemus? B, Joseph of Arimathea. Uh-huh. Matthew chapter 27, verses 57 through 61. The follower of Jesus was once, the follower of Jesus was one of the people who saw his body placed in the tomb. Mary Magdalene, John, Peter, Matthew. Who am I? Who y'all going with? The follow of Jesus. Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene. Very good. Matthew chapter 27. Matthew chapter 27. Next question. See how good you guys are on this. Next question. The chief priests and Pharisees petitioned the governor for a guard at the tomb because they feared this would happen. Jesus would rise again, a riot. His body would be stolen. Bad publicity. Y'all going with C? Okay, let's see if you're right. C, C, his body would be stolen. They were afraid his body would be stolen. Next question, what happened as the stone was being rolled away from the tomb? An eclipse, an earthquake, a flash of lightning, fire from the sky. B, B, an earthquake. I think y'all got that right. B, an earthquake. B, an earthquake. Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28. Good job. Good job. Y'all know the resurrection story, don't you? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What were the women carrying to the tomb on Easter morning? What were they carrying? Flowers, burial clothes, candles, or spices? Mmm. What y'all saying? B, C, or D? D for spices. And the answer is spices. Luke chapter 24, verse number 1. D, spices. Good job, good job, good job. Boy, y'all know these. This was the first of Jesus' disciples to go inside the empty tomb. Oh, y'all see if you know this one. Peter, John, James, or Matthew. Who was the first? Mmm, Peter. I'm going to take a stab at John. Who was it? John. John. Oh, Peter. Oh, my God. Peter. No, I don't know if that's right, y'all. We may have to, may have to check that one. Who out? Peter outran? I thought John outran. It was Peter. Okay. Lord, help the pastor. Help the pastor. When Mary Magdalene first saw Jesus on Easter morning, she mistook him for for this person, a soldier, or gardener, or priest, or gardener, or gardener. John chapter 20, verses 15 and 16. Good, 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 good. Jesus appeared among the disciples where they were hiding. Why were they surprised? They were asleep. Room was underground. Doors were locked. Windows were closed. Which y'all go with? C, I'm going with C. Doors were locked. They were surprised. I was gonna be. I thought it'd been because he had resurrected from the dead, but the doors were locked. How you get in here, Jesus? How many fish did the disciples catch when Jesus told them to lower the net on the other side of the boat? Boy, this was in the sermon. D, 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 153, 153. Good job, good job. I think they have one last one, one last one. D, 153, John 21 and 11. John 21 and 11. Next question, I think it's the last one. We have time for one more. Some people mistakenly believe Jesus said his disciples would not die. Some people mistakenly believe Jesus said this disciple would not die. Peter, John, James, or Philip? John? I'm going to go with Peter. I missed Peter last time. I'm going to go with Peter this time. Lord have mercy. <laughs> Pastor need to get back in his Bible. He need to get back in his Bible. Lord help me, Jesus. All right. 
Well, come on and give yourself a hand, clap of praise. Great job, great job, great job. Nothing like knowing the Word of God, knowing the Word of God, and we appreciate you. Welcome you to Bible study on today. We thank God for those who are in-house and even those who are streaming with us on today. We pray that you're blessed, and we know that you're blessed because you're here. You're here today. Come on, put your hands together if you're here today. Whether you're streaming, whether you're here, put your hands together that you're here today. Well, come on and stand on your feet. Let's welcome our minister of music and as he comes and leads us in some praise and worship. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody ought to shout hallelujah. Come on, this is the day that the Lord has made. Come on, put those hands together. Let's just give God praise. Hallelujah. Oh, bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Oh, bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Oh, no other name I know. Come on, help me say. Oh, why don't you bless that wonderful name of Jesus? Oh, bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. That wonderful name of I can't hear you. Oh, bless. Why don't you bless that wonderful name of Jesus? Oh, no other name I know. There's victory in the name. Bless that wonderful name, bless that wonderful name of, let me hear you, G. Oh, bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Why don't you bless that wonderful name of Jesus? Oh, no other name I know. Come on, put your hands together. Can you keep, can you keep playing that just a little bit longer? Yes, keep this, just, just keep playing it just a little bit, a little bit. Oh, you may take a seat. You can take a seat. You can take a seat. Uh, that song he just finished singing, Bless That Wonderful Name of Jesus. Powerful song in it. Bless That Wonderful Name of Jesus. No other, was it no other? No other name. I, I used to think it was no other help, but even it's no other help too. Hallelujah. But we praise the old man. Then I like that there's victory in that name of Jesus. In that powerful, oh, victory in that name. Victory in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, I know. What about power? Yes, oh, power. There's, there's power in the name of Jesus. That's where my victory comes from. Oh, power in the name of Jesus. Woo! Power in the name of Jesus. Now, this is, why I to, this is why I wanted him to play that, y'all, because I want to tell you right quick, we get ready to have Bible study, and we get ready to have a word, and we thank God that the theme for this month is giving. The theme for this month is giving, and we're just asking God to just supernaturally do some things. So before we have our lesson today, we got a special guest who's going to bless us, who knows a lot about finances, knows a lot about money. He's a great friend of mine, a great friend of pastor. We just thank God for his friendship, his fellowship, his expertise. But before he comes, I just want you to know, y'all, hallelujah, hallelujah. We thank God for last week, tithes and offerings, $111,000 in our tithes. Oh, that's in the name. Y'all ain't hear me. Oh, power in the name, in the name of 
I said $111,000. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Before we move on, can you just get a little dance right where you are? Come on, just come on. Come on. Come on. Hey. Hey. Oh, he's a good God. He's a good God. Hey. Take us out, Caesar. Come on, come on, come on, put your hands together. Hallelujah. 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 What a blessing, what a blessing, what a blessing. We thank God that has been our highest giving Sunday uh, in the history of our church without it being a special day. We have a special day. Come on, praise God. We have a special day. Anybody know our two special days for giving our win? What are our two special days? Every day is a special day. But what are the days that we, we, we really emphasize everybody tithing? First Fruit Sunday and, and church anniversary. Those are two times. The first Sunday in April and the first Sunday in December. First Sunday in December. And normally we ask uh, everybody to let's, let's, let's pool our resources, get us all tied. And we usually set a goal for, uh, to at least double our tithes and offering. So usually we set a goal between one hundred and one hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars in our tithes and offering. And uh, normally, and, and, and God has always blessed us, blessed us. Uh, I know ninety percent of the time to reach that goal or to come close to that goal. Uh, but to hear it was one eleven, I had to call the church back and ask them, "Is that for the last two Sundays, or is that just for this one Sunday only? This one Sunday only?" But come on, put your hands together. Let's bless the Lord in this place. Let's thank God for the phenomenal work he's doing. And all of our locations were up. All of our locations were up with their tithes and offering. And so we just praise God. I tell you, God is shifting. God is shifting. God is shifting. We've averaged over 700 people in the building. Uh, the last five weeks, but we've been in worship service, and so God is really, really moving, and we praise God. And uh, so we got to thank God for our special guest today. I want to put your hands together for Minister Earl Moulton. He's no stranger to us. He's blessed us many, many times before, and he's here to bless us again. So come on, put your hands together. Bless the man of God as he comes and shares. Amen. Direct that praise to the Lord. Let's give a hand clap of praise to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Because we are here today. Not a lot of people can say that. Amen. This is an interesting season and time in which we're in. Amen. But thank God and to God be the glory that we are here. Amen. Amen. And I'm here in Gwinnett County. Amen. Ain't no county like Gwinnett County. Amen. I get opportunity to teach all over the country, but it ain't nothing like Gwinnett County. Amen. Hey, man, I'm in tall cotton. Hey, man, I love it, love it, love it. Uh, Pastor uh, Kevin and I are really good friends, really good friends. We play basketball on Thursday mornings, and now my brother Caesar is with us. And every now and then, because we are friends as close as we are, I let him win. Hey, Amen. And because I was coming over here today, I let him win today. Hey, Amen. That's why he was in such a good mood. It wasn't a given. I let him win today in basketball. Hey, Amen. He got a couple of W's, amen. So we were, I'm happy for you, Pastor Kevin, amen, amen. But all jokes aside, I, I count a privilege and honor to be here on today, um, talking about something that God has gifted me to talk about. I'm bivocational, 33 years of financial planning as a professional, and 20 plus years of ministry. So uh, hopefully today that, uh, as I stand before you, that God will use me to impact your life in a positive way in your finances, amen. Well, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you so much for allowing me to be here, Lord God, to minister your word to your people. I pray to hear my voice, but receive your message. And I pray and ask you to think through my mind and speak through my lips and minister through this vessel of clay for your honor, for your glory. Prepare the hearts of your people to receive your message on today. I pray that we not just be healers, but we will be doers. I pray, Lord God, in advance, thank you for what you're going to do to us, through us, and for us. It's in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. 
a trust everyone has a uh, uh, outline. Improving, we're going to just stay in the vein of giving, giving. Improving your finances, personal finances through budgeting. Budgeting. By show of hands, how many people like to improve your finances? Everyone's hands should be up because there's always room for improvement. Even though we do it well, we could do it a little bit better. Amen? Everyone should be looking to, for ways to improve how you handle your finances. And we're going to be talking about that today through budgeting. Uh, I, I, like I said, I'm a financial planner by profession, and we're going to be talking about money. I talk about money for the last three decades. That's what I do day in and day out. I had a client come into my office the other day. She, said, I, she says, uh, I have a love-hate relationship with money. I said, love-hate relationship? She said, I love it when I have it and hate it when I don't. Amen. <laughs> How many people like that too, right? We all feel that way, amen. But tonight we're going to talk about ways we can, today we're going to talk about ways we can improve our finances through budgeting. Improving your personal finance through budgeting. 14, uh, Luke 14, 28 reads, suppose one, one of you wants to build a tower. Won't you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it? This verse records wise counsel on the subject matter of budgeting your fi financial resources. Many believers have profited greatly due to having a system in place to see where their dollars are going. Likewise, a large mass of Christians have wasted an abundance of treasures due to not having a clear plan on how to utilize their moolah. Everybody say moolah. Moolah. There's a lot of ways you can describe money, but when you say moolah, that means you got a lot of it. Amen? Moolah. So moolah. The, this lesson is designed to share some practical improving tips to better your personal finances through budgeting. Hey Amen. what is a budget? Anybody? A, a, a plan. A plan for what? A plan for your money. I forget I'm in Gwinnett. I ask this question all over. People don't know what a budget is, but y'all know in Gwinnett, amen? A plan for your money. Now, I'm not going to ask you right now. Well, let me go ahead and ask. By show of hands, how many people have a budget? Raise them high so I can see. Okay, I'm going to come back to y'all. Let me see. Put them again. Put them again. Let me make sure. Okay, y'all know y'all in church. I'm going to make sure you know that. So those are the ones who raise your hands. You have a budget. Amen. Uh, 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 ha! Let's see. Who is your name right here? Robin. She, you, you, know what, you know what she said? Just because we had don't mean we follow it. See, that's why I was going to come back to you. You see, you got a plan. Well, don't, don't put plants in my uh, audience there, Pastor Kevin. I'm giving the answers. All right, let's look at it. All right, improve your finances through uh, budgeting, your personal finances. Number one, we're going we're gonna to go through three sections. Beliefs about budgeting, basic, the basics of budgeting, and the third section we're going to cover is the benefits from budgeting. Again, the beliefs about budgeting, the basics of budgeting, and then the benefits from budgeting. Let's look at section one real quick. The beliefs about budgeting. Listen below our fundamentals for understanding the importance of budgeting effectively. Importance of budgeting effectively. Number one, desire. Everyone say desire. Can help you to understand the importance of budgeting your money. Psalm 37, 4 reads, delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. You know the number one reason why people don't have a budget? Because they don't want to. Right beside the word desire, right want to. That's the number one reason why people don't have a budget. Because they don't want to. If you wanted to have a budget, you would have a budget. Listen, I can want you to have a budget. Pastor Kevin can want you to have a budget. Any Your friends and family can want you to have a budget. But until you want to, you won't have a budget. And it's a desire, a desire so that you can understand what you're doing with your money. Amen? Let's look at number two. Discipline. Everyone say discipline. Discipline can help you to understand the importance of budgeting your money. All right, Proverbs 28, 20, 25, 28 says, a person without self-control is like a city with broken down walls. I told you to write down discipline. An undisciplined person is a dangerous person. They'll do anything to anybody, anywhere, at any time. If you and I want to be successful, we have to operate with discipline. Beside the word discipline, put have to. H-A-V-E, have to. See, most people don't operate from a budget until they have to. You get sick and tired of paying your bills late. Sick and tired of your phone getting cut off. Sick and tired of lights being turned off, right? Until you say, look, insanity is doing the same thing the same way, expecting a different outcome. So therefore, you have to, what, change. And most people don't change until they have to. They said the pain 
of remaining the same will never happen. You won't change from being the same until the, the pain of, of change comes in effect. What I mean by that is you ain't going to change until it hurts you bad enough. You ain't going to change until you get sick and tired of being sick and tired. You ain't going to change until you understand I need to discipline and I have to change. Amen? We talked about desire, want to. When it comes to budgeting, discipline, have to. Let's look at number three. Decisions can help you to understand the importance of budgeting your money. Haggai 1, 5 reads, Now therefore, says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Consider your ways. We out here running around tr treating money like it's candy. Amen? Not here, but you know people do that. Amen? Beside the word dis decisions, right, can do. C-A-N, do. Can do. What is, what is a budget? It shows you what you can do. It shows you that you can pay your bills on time. It shows you that you can put things in perspective so that you can operate effectively when it comes to money. Amen? Told you, uh, uh, number one is desire, want to. Number two is, is discipline, have to. Number three is decisions, can do. Number four is disappointments. Everyone say disappointments. Can help you to understand the importance of budgeting your money. Matthew 19.22 says, but when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful. We had great possessions. Disappointments. Right beside the word dis disappointments, can't do. A budget will not only tell you what you can do, but it also show you what you can't do. Always remember this. You don't remember anything else. Numbers don't lie. You can go out and say, I'm going to buy me a new car at the end of the month. But guess what? You go to that bank account. If it ain't in there, you ain't buying a new car. Amen? Numbers don't lie. You can lie to me. You can lie to yourself but you can't lie to your bank account. A budget helps you to see what you can and what you can't do. That makes sense? We all need to be told no sometimes. We all need discipline. I think, Pastor Kevin, this is what people suffer from, uh, not here at Gwinnett, but a lot of the churches I talk to, they suffer from a disease called TM. TM, too much and too many. Too much house, too much car. Too many clothes, too many shoes. It's a disease called TM. But there's a cure. It's called a budget. A budget will help you not to overspend. Amen? Does that make sense? Ooh, it's quiet up in here, PK. I'll be watching your Bible say they be all loud and stuff. I'm in here talking about money. They done got quiet up in here. Hello? You hear me? Amen? <laughs> All right, let's look at number five. Number five, denial. Everyone say denial. Denial can help you to understand the importance of budgeting your money. Luke 9, 23 said, and he said to him, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up the cross daily and follow me. Right beside the word denial, right, won't do. Once you start budgeting and see what you can and can't do, you should get to a place where you understand it's just some stuff I ain't going to, I'm, I'm not going to do no more. For example, just because it's lunchtime, I'm not going to go out to eat and for lunch. I'm going to bring my lunch to work. I'm not going to eat out to lunch every day. Just because it's payday, I'm not going to go shopping. Just because it's Friday, I'm not going to go shopping. Mm, it's tight, but it's right. Payday don't mean spend money unless it's in the budget. Amen. You have to get to a place where you deny yourself. Tell yourself no. When you go in there, hide your own keys to your car. Hey, Amen. Well, shoot, we ain't talking about keys no more. We got to hide the computer, right? Because Amazon is, 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 is something else. Hey, Amen. That little blue truck, people thought you got a new car, didn't they? <laughs> truck in your driveway so much. Hey, Amen. Not in here, but you know people like that. Right? Listen, when we come to, to, to handling money, Let's do this be real. God's money. We got to exercise a desire to want to do it right. Discipline, because we know we have to do it right. Decisions, understanding what we can do. Disappointments, understanding what we can't do. And denials, things that we won't do when it comes to God's money. Amen? That makes sense? When I teach budgeting class, this is a budgeting Bible study, which is totally different. This is the word of God giving us information about, the, about his money. Listen. I tell people all over the country, there are roughly 500 verses in the Bible on faith, roughly 500 on prayer, over 2,350 on how you handle money and possessions. 
Why do you think God talks so much about money in the Bible? Anybody? Say it again. One of the biggest resources, anybody else? Ooh, what's your name? Bertha? Yes, Bertha. Bertha, say Bertha. Harris, amen? Listen, she's right. He knew we were going to have to handle it, but he wanted us to handle it right. It could become a temptation. Anybody heard this scripture before? For the love of money is the root of all evil. Listen, money is not a sin, but money can cause you to sin. Money will cause you to do things you never said you would do for it. Money is a horrible master, but a wonderful servant. Money will do exactly what you tell it to do. But on the flip side, it will have you doing stuff you said you would never do. So make sure when it comes to money, you're in control and not having it control you. Does that make sense? All right. Let's look at uh, section two, the basics of budgeting the basis of budgeting. And, and usually what I said when I started saying was when we come into a, a, a budgeting workshop, we give out a budget and we kind of talk about it and all that. Here we're going to talk about scriptures, the word of God, because as a man and woman of God, we need to understand stewardship versus ownership. Relatively speaking, the money that's in your pocket, your purse, your bank accounts, your retirement accounts, relatively speaking, it's your money because it's in your possession. Possession is nine tenths of the law. I can't come up to you and start taking money out of your purse because what? It's your money relatively speaking, but absolutely speaking, whose money is it? It's God's money, and we got to begin to act like it. It all belongs to him. Amen? All right, let's look, let's look at number one in basic budget. List below our actions you can take to budget your money effectively. Number one, supplication. Everyone say supplication. Praying and asking God for guidance. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. I just finished sharing, it's all God's money. People come to me all the time and say, Earl, I tithe. I'm a tither. I give my 10%, but I'm still struggling. Can you help me? I said, well, do you have a budget? They said, well, no, I don't have a budget, but I still tithe. I said, that's great. I said, you are halfway there. I said, because you're, you're being obedient with the 10%, but you're not asking God what he wants you to do with the 90%. And if you're not handling a budget, then you're, you're doing what you want to do with it. Does that make sense? God wants you to come to him and ask him, listen, money, money doesn't come with instructions. Money comes with rules and principles. If you understand the rules and principles about money, you can be successful with it. The answer to most people's question is they, they say, well, I just need more money. 99% of the time, more money ain't the answer. More knowledge. You quiz yourself right now. If I had to grade you from A to, to F on how you're handling money right now, what would your grade be? And then from there, because God is looking at how you handle money, how do you qualify for more based upon what you're doing, what you already have? Ooh, it's tight, but it's right. Listen, whenever you're spending God's money, pray. If you're going to spend money for $100 or less, pray, God, should I do this? I'm not talking about paying your bills. That's a given. I'm just talking about outspending. If it's 101 to 1,000, pray seven days. God, am I supposed to have this? That's a long time, ain't it? It'll stop you from spending a lot of money, too, amen? And it will also, God will give you wisdom if you should, if you shouldn't. What's that? Common sense ain't so common. She said, what about common sense? Some, some people don't. So it's a little bit of both. I'm, not, I'm being real. But... But when it comes to money, God's money, we need to ask him what he wants us to do about it. So what's the way you communicate with God? Through prayer. Prayer. If you're going to spend for $100 or less, pray. God, should I do this? If it's $1,000 to $101 to $1,000, pray seven days. You know when you're going out and you're ready to buy you uh, something that's, that purse is $750? Mm-hmm. And you're like, oh, I, uh, it's people who do it. Amen. Shoes with red on the bottom. Never got that because it's going to get scuffed up. Amen. But pray and ask God, should you, should you or should you not spend this money? Right? And then if it's $1,000 more, we'll pray 30 days. You're buying a house. You're buying a car. You're buying a big screen TV. I said, like, listen, that what will happen to you is it will exercise discipline. 
How many times you bought something and, and three days later you wish you had? Listen, <laughs> she said, take it back. Listen, most, apart, most houses got two car garages. Most times the cars are parked in the driveway because the stuff that's in the, in the garage is stuff that they bought they don't use no more. When I was growing up, we ain't never had no garage sale. What was a garage? I was like, when we moved to what is a garage sale? We needed everything we bought, amen? Why? You buy stuff you don't need to impress people you don't like with money you don't have. And you're saying, God bless me with more. Come on now. Come on now. Pray. We got to pray and ask God to show us. Listen, when we was young, me and my brother, my, my mom used to send us to the store. And she would give us money. And, and, and it, it was in the summertime just to keep us busy. She said, go to the store, get this stuff. She'd give us like $20. And she would give us a list of items. It usually comes out $10, $15. And we got good at it. We started calculating in our minds. So when we get back, she would ask us for two things. The money, I mean, her, the items and her change. And how, you know, how many of y'all know? 99% of the time, we never had no change. Why? We spent it. You know, anybody know about now laters? Lemon heads, baked beans, come on, potato chips. We had it all, amen? And guess what? God sees us the same way. He gives us money, and we act like the children, like me and my brother, amen? Spend it on what we want to instead of asking him what he wants us to do with the money. Amen? Just because you can don't mean you should. All right, let's look at uh, number two, supplication. Number, th number two, documentation. Doc, tracking your spending for 30 days. Revelation 119, write it down, uh, what you have seen, both the things that are now happening and things that will happen. All right, listen, the only way you can have an accurate budget is if you track your spending for 30 days. If people come, come to my office, they want to meet, and they say, I want to go over a budget. They have to bring a budget for me to meet with them about a budget. Typically, when they come in with a budget, they're showing me their bills. And I say, that's not your budget, that's your bills. They say, well, that, that's my budget. I said, no. The, the difference in a, a budget with just bills and an accurate budget is there's no spending. You got to track your spending for 30 days. There are people out here that make $5,000 a month, their bills are $4,000 a month, but they're spending another $1,500 a month and don't figure out why they're short. Because they never write down their spending. You have to track your spending every day every, for 30 days to get an accurate budget. Because in that, it's going to have donuts out to eat, get your hair done, nails done, movies. It's going to have everything you spend money on so you will have an accurate account of how you spend money along with your what? Your bills. So that's what you're going to do. You're going to track and spend it for 30 days so you have an accurate uh, account of how you can do your budget. All right? Number three, organization. Everyone say organization. organization. Developing a plan of action. Proverbs 16, 3. Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and he will establish your plans. We told you to pray about it. Once you start uh, uh, tracking your spending and you gather all your data, then you're going to organize it. What you owe, who you owe, you know, how long is, is, is the payments, you know, from high to low, what are the interest rates? Then you're going to organize it, all right? And then we're going to get to number four, notation. They want to say notation. You're going to write it down. I was going to ask earlier how many people have a budget. Raise your hand again. Uh-huh, high, raise them high. Look at PK, look at <laughs> they, they now don't want to raise them, right? How many of you have it written down? Raise your hand. Okay. I'm not even going to ask you how many sticking to it. Just, just have it written, because if it's not written, it's not real. If you have a budget and it's in your mind, that's called a wish list. How many times you walk in the store with your grocery list in your mind and you, you get eggs, bread, milk, cheese. You walk in, come out with cookies, potato chips. Come on now. So if you can't do that in 30 minutes, how are you going to do it for 30 days? Anytime you have a budget, you have to write it down. That's the only way it's going to be effective for you. If it's not written, it's not real. Can you imagine, PK, if we had GPS on our budget? <laughs> what GPS? Are? Go ahead, turn left here. Turn right. If you miss a turn, what do they say? Rerouting, rerouting, rerouting. You imagine walking in the store. Rerouting, rerouting, rerouting. You know you can't afford nothing up in here, amen? What if we had GPS on our budget? That would be helpful, though, wouldn't it? 
It'll stop you in your tracks, and you'll be trying to cut it down. So shh, shh. <laughs> I mean, not in here, but I mean, you know, people who would try to do that. Amen? Amen. All right, so we said the basic budget, you need to pray about it, supplication. Ask God for his guys. And number two, documentation. Track the spending for 30 days so you can have an accurate account of what you have uh, each month to work with. And number three, organization. You're going to develop a plan of action. Number four, notation. You're going to write it down. And number five, dedication. Everyone say dedication. Resolving to stick to your budget in spite of the challenges. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Listen, the power of consistency. Be consistent. Everything you do on a daily basis has power and effect in your life. You can tell anybody pretty much their life based upon what they do on a daily basis. You can tell somebody who exercise every day. You can tell somebody who pray every day. You can tell a lot about a person what they do on a daily basis. Amen? You know when a person's organized, amen? You, per you know when a person's unorganized. When you start this journey on your budget, you got to stick with it. Guess what's going to happen? Life. Life is going to happen. Things are going to change. One of the most consistent things about the financial service industry over the last three decades that I've been in it is change. It's always something that's going to change, always something that's going to happen. But if you have a budget, you have something, to, a guide to stick to, to go to. Even when things, emergencies come, because inside your budget, we're going to have a budget in class, inside your budget will be emergency funds built into it. Okay? That makes sense? Always, always, always stick to it. Don't quit. When I played football years ago, they said you can't ever stop a quitter from quitting, but you never stop a winner from winning. Amen? So listen, when we start our budget, these are the basics of it. These are things that you and I can do on a regular basis. Does that make sense? Let's get to section three, because let's, let's get a little antsy, amen? <laughs> huh? All right. Let's look at the section three. Section three, the benefits from budgeting. The benefits from budgeting. We talked about the beliefs. Then we talked about the basics. What are some of the benefits if you actually budget your money effectively? All right. Number one, financial understanding. Financial understanding. Getting clarity on your financial situation. First Kings 3, 9. I ask you to give me the heart of under that understands so that I can rule your people in the right way. And I know the difference between right and wrong. Otherwise, it is impossible to rule this great people of yours. Getting understanding. Listen, when you do a budget, no more guesswork. You know where you stand. One of the hardest things to do with money is not know what you have. I know, not in here, but you know people who call ATM all the time. Or the bank, right? What are they doing? They checking to see what they have. Come on now. Well, now you have the apps and stuff. You can look at it on your phone, amen? When you operate from a budget, you give yourself financial understanding, clarity to where you stand financially, amen? It was a story about a husband and wife. He just kept mismanaging money. He didn't agree, she didn't agree, he didn't agree, she didn't agree. And they just kept arguing about money. And one day, he just came to a head. They had a knockdown, drag out fight about money. The next day, the guy went to work and said, man, me and my wife had a knockdown, drag out fight, lasted all through the night. He said, what happened? He said, when, he, when she finished, she came crawling to me on her hands and knees. He said, for real? He said, what did she say? She said, you come out from beneath that bed. I ain't through with you yet. <laughs> hey, these women get that supernatural strength when they come to that money, amen? Amen. PK, you ain't like that with this. You, you, you wasn't under the bed, was you? No. That's just it. <laughs> This, do you, I make light of that, but you know the number one reason, number one cause for divorce right now? It used to be infidelity, now it's money. Not too much, but lack of. You never see somebody argue over having too much money. If you don't pick these $100 bills up off the floor, I'm leaving you. <laughs> huh? No, baby, I got you. Go ahead on upstairs, amen? Right? Lack of it. Why? Because they're not operating from a budget. Amen. All right, let's look at section two. Financial stability. Everyone say financial stability. Financial understanding gives you clarity. Financial stability, now you're gaining control 
uh, I mean, financial understanding. Now you're gaining control of your financial situation. Proverbs 21.5, good planning and hard work leads to prosperity, but uh, hasty shortcuts leads to poverty. Now you go from understanding where you are, now you're paying, you're getting control of where you are, now you're paying your bills on time. Everything's paid on time. Now you can set up uh, uh, automatic bill pays and things of that nature, saving yourself 5% on everything that you're paying, 10% on all that. Most people overpay because they're afraid to set it up automatically because you're not sure if you're going to pay it on the 15th or the 18th. I'm just not in here, but I'm just saying you know people who do that, right? But if you do that, typically they would give you what? A discount. There's ways that we can begin to save money, and there's ways that we can begin to operate in such a way that that helps us to get control over what, uh, of our finances. Amen? Number one is financial understanding, getting clarity. Number two is financial stability, getting control. Let's look at set, number three, financial breakthrough. Financial breakthrough, getting relief in your financial situation. Matthew 25 uh, 19 through 20, one of my favorite scriptures. After a long time, the master of the servants returned to sell the accounts with them. The man who had received five bags of gold bought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I've gained five more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share in the master's happiness. Mm. Listen, we all want to be told, job well done. And listen, I told you you want to go from getting clarity to getting control. Now you're getting some relief. Not only you, you can now pay your bills, but now you can save some money. A little relief. It's the worst feeling in the world living paycheck to paycheck, just working to pay bills. Get a little relief. Now you not only can pay your bills, now you can save a little money. Amen? Let's look at number four, financial freedom. We're going to move from financial understanding, clarity, financial stability, control, financial breakthrough, relief. Now let's look at financial freedom, getting a release from your financial situation. Deuteronomy 15, 2. And in this manner of, of the release, every creditor that lend, lendeth order unto his neighbor shall release it. He shall not exact it of his neighbor or of his brother because it's called the Lord's release. Can you imagine if someone called you right now and said, we're going to release you from all your debt? Amen. Would your life be any different? Major difference. If I can't share anything else with you, Get out of debt. Listen, the Bible says this, the borrower is a slave to the lender. You can't get out of it what you owe until it's paid. As a man and woman of God, we should not try to get out of it until we pay it. Amen? The question is why we keep getting into it. But once you get to a place of financial release, God can help you get out of it, amen? Not only you get the control of it, you understand what you got, now you get to save a little bit, now you get to pay some stuff off. Ain't no better feeling than paying off a car, paying off a credit card. Amen? We should have a, a, a day where you come up and have a, a testimony. Yeah, put, put the, the stuff you pay off in the little uh, thing in the front, and you pray over it, amen? Put it outside, we can burn it, amen? I went a little, went a little too far right there. We'll take it outside, put it in the trash can, Amen? Wouldn't that be nice if you burned up your credit card and debt went away with it? That'd be nice, wouldn't it? You would <laughs> but guess what? If we stop utilizing them, it's a study done that, that people who use cash versus credit spend 50% less money. Liquid versus leverage. Write that down. Liquid versus leverage. Liquid versus leverage. What is liquid? You pay for cash for everything. If you can't afford it, you don't get it. Leverage, you buy as much as you can, you pay for as long as you can, and you pay as little as you can, and you stay in debt. That's the world's way. You know, you get a credit card, and they say, well, you put $500 on it, 18%, $25 a month, it don't hurt you. You don't mind. So you do it again, amen? Then you get another credit card. You get it up to the balance of $3,000, dollars you go get another one. Start all over from scratch, $25. Next thing you know, you $10,000 in debt. It's going to take you 30 years to pay it off. You're working now for the creditor. That's what I say, what? Slavery. Modern day slavery. All of us right now could be out of debt if what we borrow, we could pay it back without interest. What keeps people in debt is interest. They, you think they're friendly because they're giving you $3,000 worth of credit? 
they know that you're eventually going to take the, ba the bait, amen? And you're going to be paying on that for five, six, seven, eight years. And when you finish paying off that $3,000, it's around $18,000. And they know that. So the answer is not always more money. The answer is more knowledge. Hosea 4, 6, my people perish for lack of knowledge. You know, we make a lot of money in our community. It's how we handle it. Listen, we spend more, mo more time trying to obtain money than to find out how to maintain and retain money. It's easy to get our hands on it. The question is, how long will you keep it? God can help us if we go to him and ask us, what do you want me to do with your money? Amen? All right, so we went from financial understanding, getting clarity, financial stability, getting control, financial breakthrough, getting some relief, financial freedom, getting uh, release. Now we're going to move to financial blessings. Everyone say financial blessings. Getting increase to your financial situations. Deuteronomy 15, 6 says, For the Lord your God will bless you just as he had promised you. He shall lend, you shall lend to many nations and not borrow. You shall reign over many nations, but they shall not reign over you. The Lord wants to bless you and I. But the question is, are you in a position to be blessed? I, I teach uh, all over. Sometimes I'll have a ball under the, the thing, and I'll have the pastor stand up, and I'll have him fold his arms, and I'll toss him the ball. And, of course, he couldn't catch it because he wasn't in position. God is throwing blessings, but are we in position to receive it? Come on now. What's the best way to gain? The Bible tells us what? To give. Luke 6, 38. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Press down, shaken together, and run over. Should men give unto your bosom. The biggest challenge in most churches, people are trying to get and not give. God is, every second of every day, God has trained us to show us that we are givers. Every second of every day. When we prove it to you, all right, everybody look at me. Everybody, take a deep breath. Hold it. Now give it back. If you didn't give it back, you would die. Every breath you take, you got to give another one. In order to be alive, you got to be a giver. You take a breath, you give it. God has trained us. We, we have the best teacher in the world. God so loved the world, he gave. It's so many scriptures on giving throughout the Bible. And listen, I'm going to use that for my, because it's a Bible study. But one of my friends, uh, I wouldn't call him a friend, one of my associates from years ago, when I first got going in the financial service industry, and we were sitting at a, a luncheon, and it was a high-end high, high, high end luncheon. And it wasn't a lot of uh, earls in there, to say the least. It wasn't a lot of us in there. But this guy was multi multi And through the favor of God, I was sitting at the table. And we were saying, one nugget, give us one nugget. The guy said, give us one nugget you could tell us. He was a multi, multi, multi millionaire. Give us one nugget you could give us that we could take with us so we could begin to grow. He said, well, one nugget I can give you is be a giver. Had nothing to do with church. Blew me away. So now, you know, I was eating salad. I stopped, amen. I said, say that again. He said, be a giver. He said, in order to be successful, in order to be a multimillionaire, in order to be successful at any level, you have to be a giver. He said, I'm afraid not to give. Blew me away. I was sitting there like, what? I almost shouted amen, but I remember I was at a business meeting, amen? Listen, God created us to be givers. He had a little rolling bag, you know, like a little roll bag that you travel around with. I think he had some prodigal stuff in there, some, some of his books. But in there, he said, I keep $10,000 in that bag looking for opportunities to give. You know what I said? <coughs> I said, he said, what, what's wrong? I said, it's opportunity calling you, amen. Don't you be missing your blessings, amen, up in here. I got spirits on. I don't you miss your blessings up in here now. But listen, all of us, we should look for opportunities to look like our father. When we give, we look like God. God is a giver. Go out to lunch today. It could be Zaxby's. It could be anywhere. Pay for the person's lunch right in front of you. Two things they're going to do. 
They're going to say, thank you, and God bless you. Because you look like him. God is a giver, and we're his child, so we should be givers. God trained us to be givers. God desires. For, listen, God wants to bless you, but he doesn't want to bless you. He wants to get the blessing not just to you, but through you. Yep. Proverbs, what is it, 13, 22? And a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. He's not just trying to bless you. He's trying to get the blessing through you to your kids, to your grandkids. God always thinks generationally, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and so should we. If what you're thinking about is just about you, it's not big enough. Regroup, go to God, and ask him, what do you want me to do with your money for my family, for my family's legacy? You got to build legacy. Amen? That makes sense? So financial blessings. Listen, I think this. Uh, I think that we're on the right track. We're blessed to have, to be at Berean Christian Church, have pastors, Pastor Lee, Pastor Kevin, who take the time to talk about money, the tough subjects, and bring people in who want to share their expertise about that. And not talk about money just to get it from you. Because God don't need your money. He needs you to obey so that he can bless you. One of my favorite scriptures, Pastor Kevin, and I'll take my seat. Genesis 12, 1. Abrahamic covenant. When he told Abraham to go, and he said, I'm going to do this. He said, I'm going to make you, your name great. I'm going to bless you, make you a great nation. I'm going to make you to be a blessing. God will always bless you to be a blessing. God will always bless you to be a blessing. You got too many people on Facebook, TikTok, and all that stuff trying to be uh, popular and not being prosperous. God wants us to prosper. What uh, He said, the Lord says, I want you to prosper. John 3, 2. Be in good health and prosper even as your soul prospers. That's God's design for us to prosper. Not just for us, but for us, us and others. Amen? Listen, I hope that what I shared with you today was a blessing to you, and I believe this. Because now you have heard the word, that I pray that you receive the word, and then that you do the word. Amen. God wow. Bless. Come on. Let's thank God for Minister Earl. Anybody have a question for Earl while he's here? While he's here, a question you want to ask about money, investing, or just a question. Yes. Yeah, I'll give it to you. Minister Earl Moulton, it's on your paper. Did you get a paper? On the front? Right on top, front of your paper. Uh, okay. <laughs> My question is, who in this black community or in the black church are no longer, uh, you know, the budget is no longer needed? All right, come on, answer. When uh, is a budget no longer needed? Someone said that to me uh, earlier today. Well, I, I'm at a place where I don't need a budget anymore. Well, I mean, I, I'll, I'll say this. If you have bills to pay every month, if you have to manage money every month, it would be wise to operate from a budget. I'm not saying that you have to pay stuff off or things like just knowing where that money's going and allocating it. And not only that, one of the things, Pastor Kevin, that I, I begin to share with my clients is that it's not only just you, it's your family. What if something happens to you and someone has to come in and help you, they wouldn't know exactly what to do. You see what I'm saying? A lot of times in our community, Something might happen. I don't give a, a personal testimony. My mom had a stroke several years ago before she passed away. She couldn't talk couldn't, and, and, and couldn't hear. So it was not, there was no communication. And we were trying to figure out what to do for her. It would be a lot easier if everything was written out. And we could just pick it up and say, okay, she does this, this. Is All the things are in order. Budget is nothing more than getting your money in order getting yourself in order, if nothing else, get your whole house in order, because I don't know, it's been some interesting times in which we live. You say, here today, gone tomorrow, it's a lot of times it's here today, gone today, amen? So we want to make sure, there's, there, in my opinion, there's never a time where you shouldn't operate from a budget, and don't look at a budget just to pay off things, but just to have order, financial order in your life for you and your family. Yeah, yeah. Anybody else? Yes, right? Come on, well,
Sure. I got you. Listen, Sarah, her question Same was, okay. is it okay to pay everything by, by cash because then you don't establish any credit? Well, that's a double-edged sword. See, one of the things I don't like to do from a pulpit without is, is giving a, a, advice like for everybody. It's not a blanket advice. I'm a financial tailor. What I do for you is fit for you. What I do for you is fit for you, and so on and so forth. In your case, she said that she was paying cash, and when she went to buy something, they said she didn't have enough credit. Listen, I'm telling you to spend cash not to get in debt. If you use your credit, if you're going to pay it off, you can use your credit like cash. So you have a credit card and you have $2,000 credit limit. You could all your bills, you pay $700 a month, use your card, but pay it off at the end of every month. And guess what? You've established credit and you're still using it as cash. When it gets into where you're letting it roll over and you're paying 18 and 19 to 20% interest, that's when it becomes detrimental to you. So you, as long as you're in control of your, your credit, how you spend, you, you can treat it just like cash, and you get the best of both worlds. No debt, plus you build your credit. Get that, and get rewards. Some people get rewards from that. But th that's the danger of that. So you, you think, people think that's they're giving you something. That's called a bait. Yo, I'm going to give me some more points. I'm going to give me some more points. Then you can't pay that off, amen? You're getting $100 worth of points. You got $2,000 worth of debt. Come on now, who win in that game, amen? Yes, sir. Do I recommend any budgeting software? I don't. Um, I, I think this. Budgeting software can help, but the most important thing is you. You got to track your spending, know what it is. Because basically, you know what you make. You know, I tell people when they come in, I say, we're going to deal with your net income. What's deposited into your account, not what you hope to be deposited. Not what you think is going to be deposited, not what you believe is going to be deposited, but what is actually deposited into your account every month. I'm not talking about overtime and all that, once every two, three years, none of that. We're talking about net income. Why? Because that's a real number that we can work with, and also your spending. Now, you can do budgeting software, and, and it'll show you how to pay off stuff. D typically, when you're talking about a budgeting software, you're talking about debt software, where you put in your credit cards to show you how many months, and you pay this amount to pay it off and stuff like that. But budgeting is a simple thing with you and a pen and piece of paper. you got to get control of where you are. And, and then from there, you do have software that can show you how to pay off debt and things of that nature. Is that who you were referring to? Okay. Yes. Absolutely, absolutely. Every, these are principles. I told you money and coming instruction become rules and principles. They are basic principles about life. You know, things like desire, discipline, yeah. decisions, disappointments, denial. That's life principles. You can put those in any area of your life. Tell yourself no sometimes. You know you don't need to go. You don't need that. Th those are principles. And the principles work whether it's money or just other items. Amen. Man, this Gwinnett, man, they got it together, amen. Hey, Come man. on, let's thank God, God for Minister Earl again. Great stuff, great stuff, great stuff, great stuff. Any, anybody out there uh, uh, have a testimony about, about a budget or about even in the last uh, couple of months, how God has blessed you financially or how you've had a budget, you've seen how the budget has worked for you? Anybody just, how it's worked for you? Yes, give me that mic right there. Mm -hmm. I always try to beat the creditors, so... I have a Macy's card, uh -huh. and yesterday I received a coupon. If I spend forty dollars, I'll get fifteen dollars off my whatever I spend. Mm. So my mind is now thinking, if I go to Macy's, mm -hmm. I'm gonna look for something that costs at least forty dollars. Yes. <laughs> I get fifteen dollars off. So that I can, so they want me to put it on my credit card in order to get the fifteen dollars mm -hmm. off for those that get those coupons. So what I do, I go and get something. I keep the money in my pocket, mm -hmm. and when I get the fifteen dollars off, I stand right there, mm -hmm. and I pay the balance of the fifteen dollars, so I don't receive no bill mm -hmm. in the mail. Wow. Powerful, yes, good stuff, good stuff. Anybody else, something you're doing, something you're using that's been beneficial, helpful, as it relates to money? Anybody? Money, money? Yes. Pass that mic. You say what now? 
you do bill pay. Okay, all your tithes, all your bills, come on, first of the month. Who else does that? First of the month, first of the month, okay, okay. Okay, by the fifth, everything done. Okay. Okay. Okay, who who knows with, with PK, we wait to the last, you know, it, it ain't due to the, wait to the, t <laughs> come on, anybody like that? Come on, just be honest, just be honest. You know, it's due on the third, but you got the tenth to pay it. If you pay by the tenth, you know what I'm talking about? So who is that? Anybody like that? It's just me. Come on, y'all got to be honest. Just me, just me. And I think, am I right, First Lady? That's, but and First Lady, handles, thank God she handles everything now. Hallelujah. <laughs> First Lady. And everything got to be done by, the, by a certain time. It's got to be done. It's got to be done. Yes, 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 yes. You, you, you got to know your weaknesses. got to know your strengths. got to know your triggers. Come on, you got to know. You got to know. You got to know. You got to be honest with yourself. You got to get real with yourself. You know what I mean? I am not here. I would like to be here, but I'm not here. Now, how, God, how do I get there? How do I get there? And again, these are just some principles, some principles that we can take that can help us to get to that place, to get to that place. Yes, ma'am. You do automatic draft on all your bills. Paying them on time. That's good. You got to find out what works best for you. Like I say, because it is somewhere. And again, we're, we're blessed that we have a relationship with God. Uh, and we can ask God to show us and to help us. Now watch this. We'll ask God to show us and help us, but we won't ask the Holy Ghost to convict us. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> convict me when I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing with my money. Convict me. Hey, that was a nice principle. Didn't like it. A lot of us didn't like that. Anytime you spend less than $100, you take a what? You pray for a day. Less than $100. Anything 100 to 1000 seven days. We ain't uh-uh, uh-uh, ain't uh-uh. And so that means you got to put something back. Come on, help me, somebody. You're checking something out. It's over $100. You put up putting it back. I got to stay under $100 because if I'm going to do this over 107 I've got to be praying about it. See, those are good disciplines. If I'm going to spend over $1,000, 30 days. I didn't see y'all writing that down. I didn't see y'all writing that down when he was saying that. Hallelujah. But, was, but that was a good piece to write down. Income tax. Who already got income tax checks already back? Already got them back? Anybody get them back yet? Y'all still waiting them? Praise God. That means we got more money coming if y'all still waiting on them. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, now watch this, y'all. Income tax check. A lot of times when you, people already know what they're going to do with the income tax. Already got my plan. A, B, C, D, E. That's the wrong way to do it. That's the wrong way to do it. God, you know. My needs, you know. You can see what I can't see. You know. So is this $1,500, this $1,800, this $2,500, whatever it is, this $400, whatever it is, God, God, I want you to give me wisdom. And before I go to thinking and planning, how am I going to spend it? And what I'm going to spend it on, you know better than I know what needs to be paid, who needs to be paid off. But here's what we make the mistake, y'all. We start trying to figure it out. We start trying to make it happen. Because we think in our own intellect, our own mind, that I can fix this. No, you can't. The Spirit has to breathe on your money. And for the Spirit to breathe on your money, you got to ask for it. Breathe. God, I give you permission to speak into my finances, to speak in what needs to happen. I'm telling y'all to make a difference. Because a lot of times, even people who give 10%, the other 90% belongs to them. Uh-uh. God, this 90 still belongs to you. Hallelujah. Come Amen. on, praise Pastor, God. Good we, stuff, Pastor, good stuff. we have yes. someone online. Jennifer says, does he work with businesses, and can she get his information? Does he work with businesses? Yes, yes. Can You want to give her your information? You give it to Can you do it on? You want to do it online? put it online. She's, She's online. She's online. How, how, you, how would you handle that, Earl? Or we can take her information? Yeah, she can just call the office. And call the office. office. She call the office. Give her the church office number. We'll call the office. Yeah, call the church office, yep. and we'll make sure you get Earl's information. Good stuff, good stuff, good stuff, good stuff. Man, never had a large, get a large sum of money, just don't know what to do with it? Don't do nothing with it. That's what I try to tell people. This is, God, what you want? Some money coming in the mail? Oh, my God, where did this come from? God, you showed blessing. Yes, I did, but I will sit on it. Seven days, eight days, three days. Just sit on it and say, God, what do you want? Just leave it there. Just leave it there and let it hear from God. I heard I saw another hand and we're going to close out. Oh, Brother Joel, yes, sir. That mic there. I just want to say something very simple. Thank you, preacher and teacher. 
very good. Um, I remember way back then, uh, when I was ministering, I used to tell the people, don't pay on your light bill mm -hmm. and your gas bill. Try to pay it all and you'll get it. Mm. Because if you're late, they'll give you a late mm -hmm. fee. Mm -hmm. And they're wondering why the bill is getting higher every mm. month because they're paying on the light bill or the gas mm. bill. That's all I want to say. Yeah. Good stuff, good stuff, good stuff. God, show me when, because I'm robbing Peter to pay Paul and I'm robbing Paul to pay Peter. Now you show me who I need to be robbing. But then, God, most of all, you show me how I'm robbing you. And maybe the biggest mistake I'm making, God, is I'm not asking you to direct my money. I'm not asking you to control the money. Maybe my biggest problem is I'm in too much control of what I want to do. And watch this, y'all. What you're doing ain't bad. It's not, I mean, it's not nothing evil you're doing. But we're just used to just controlling and saying, Lord, I'm going to just let you have that. I'm going to let you have that. Give me the wisdom. So here what God is saying a couple of things. We go on, y'all, real quick, real quick. God will give you the opportunity to ask somebody. You need to be ready for this. To ask somebody, what's your budget? God will give you an opportunity to ask somebody, do you have a budget? Do you have a budget? And you let God take it from there. You simply just drop the seed. Do you have a budget? Do you have a budget? So then, again, so I, want, I just want to get it, okay. Uh, uh, God will give you an opportunity. Uh, to ask the option, do you have a budget? Uh, 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 yes, yes, to have a budget. Get a budget, because that's what prayer does. Last thing, you guys, uh, we're in a month of giving. We're in a month of giving. And uh, I want to share this with you. We're about to do this piece uh, starting Sunday, uh, 21 days of giving, 21 days of giving. And for what we want you to do in the next 21 days, it's probably start Sunday, Monday, we want you to do these 21 things. Here, I'm going to give you an idea of what they're like. 21 days of giving. Uh, number one, it may be, and you get all this on Sunday, uh, give your mail carrier a note of thanksgiving or a tangible gift for their service. Give a compliment to as many people as possible today. Give someone a call you've not spoken to. Give gently used clothes to an outreach organization today. Give support to a black business today. Give a positive review to a business today. Give a sacrificial auction as well as pay your tithes today. Give someone an invitation to an upcoming church event today. Give someone an assistance in a project they are working on today. Give a donation to the Berean Scholarship Fund today. Uh, give somebody a prayer today. Give somebody a prescription, a, a, a word from the Bible today. Just 21 days of just giving. 21 days of giving. And every day we'll give you something to do. Now, even though you may not be able to do it that particular day, the goal is by the end of 21 days, you have a checklist and say, you know what, out of 21 days of giving, I've been able to do at least 18 of these things or 15 of these things I was able to do. But again, just getting the spirit of giving. And again, it's not about us getting, but it's about us giving. Come on, put your hands together. Bless the Lord in this place. Thank you, Minister Earl. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Father, we thank you for this word today. There's somebody here today who needs to repent of their giving, of their spending. Oh, God, I pray, God, they'll know that someone's here to pray with them about spending, about giving, about a budget. If there's someone here today struggling, someone listening, struggling, I believe there's somebody here who wants help, needs help. Your word says ask, it should be given. Seek, you find, knock, and the doors are open. You tell us that in your word. And so, God, we're asking you to show us all about budgeting and about financing. How to write something down so if we die today, folk will know what to do tomorrow. Help us with that, God. These little disciplines, documentation, notation, journaling, texting people, let them know. If something happened to me, go to this desk drawer. The second drawer to your left. You'll find a little black book. Everything is in there that you need to know. Have your way, God. Have your way. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much again. We want to thank you last week for your $111,000. Come on and praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, 
still have opportunity to give, opportunity to give. Don't forget, we're preparing for our church anniversary, first Sunday in April, where we're asking everybody, everybody to give a sacrificial offering and their tithe. We're excited about we got a fast that's coming up the last week in the month of March, five days, five days of fasting. And that's going to be uh, the 27th through the 31st, 27th through the 31st. And we're excited, excited about what God is going to do. We're going to have revival healing service on the 30th and the 31st. I want you to start putting that on your calendars. We're excited about what God's going to do, what God's going to do as it relates to our revival and our healing service. We're going to have a family day, family day, family day Saturday uh, for our anniversary. That's coming up. That's going to be uh, probably the first Saturday in April uh, leading up to our church anniversary. So we're excited about what God is doing in our life, God is doing in our church. So thank you for helping to make it happen. G Pearls, don't forget, uh, you've got an event coming up on the 18th. On the 18th, encourage you ladies to sign up and be a part of that and be a part of that. We thank God that if you need to take a shot, we praise God, COVID, not COVID shots, but vaccination shots are free, are free. It's going to change at some point. And so we encourage you. We've got people here every Thursday, every Thursday from 11 to 2. Help us to get the word out. Help us get the word out. Adam members class is going to be this Saturday at, uh, 11, at 10 o'clock, at 10 o'clock. And then next Sunday, we're going to do a special Adam member class in person for those who want to go through Adam member. A lot of people said, I want to go through Adam member, but I just can't do Saturday at 10. We're going to do an in-person Adam members class. Uh, next Sunday at 12, 1230, right after service is over. And so if you know people who want to get go through other members so they can get involved in ministry, please let them know. We're excited about what God is doing. The food giveaway is coming up, and uh, we're excited about that. So come on, let's stand on our feet. It's time to go. I appreciate y'all being here on today. Guys, come on, give God a hand, clap of praise for what he's doing and how he's moving, how he's moving. Ask God today, God, how you want to use me today? How you want to be a blessing today? Because he wants to use us and be a blessing. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Instead of going to the cab. No, they've all we've all, we've always we've always collected our own tithes and offering, and it, it all goes over to the cab. But together we count it together. But everybody has their separate budget. We have a budget. The cab has a budget. And Henry County has a budget. We have one finance team that counts all the money from all three locations. Mm -hmm. And so you want to make sure that when you're giving, that you're not clicking on the cab. You're clicking Gwinnett. So that money that you give to the cab is not going to. Now, it's all going to the same location, but we want to get the credit for it since you're members here. And so uh, did that answer the question? Did that help? They stop taking it. Okay, well we're we gonna talk right after service because we're gonna fix that. Come on, help me, somebody. <laughs> you think you fixed it? Well, let me know. Anytime, anytime, anytime your money's not right, anytime something happens, call the church. Here's who you have to speak to, Pastor Kevin. Come on, help me, somebody. We ain't trying to escalate. We ain't trying to go through. We will talk to Pastor Kevin. Because the money's not right. My money's not getting to the church. My check is not being cashed. I'm not getting my credit so that we can go ahead and escalate that and find out what's going on. Hallelujah. Father, we love you. We thank you that you're charge you in control. Continue to bless us the rest of this day, the rest of this week. You're a mighty good God. We pray your anointing on Earl, what you called him to do. Stretch your hands towards his ministry. Now, God, as you continue to elevate him, have your way, God. As you continue to give him wisdom, have your way, God. We thank you for him, God. What he means to the body of Christ, to his family, to this church, to the community. So you continue to have your way, God. We love you. We thank you now as we leave this place. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Appreciate you, appreciate you, appreciate you.